What's up? This is Ben from Wad Prep, and we have a special video for you today with the one and only Eric Hinman. You might have seen a video that I released recently on my channel featuring his amazing fitness oasis that he has at his house. And we decided to take the advantage and opportunity to talk about a machine that Wad Prep hasn't talked about yet, and that is the Ski Erg. So if there's one person I know in my life that understands cardio equipment and all the various pieces like the rowing and the running, all the monostructural stuff that I'm not particularly good at, it's this man right here. So Eric is actually gonna be coaching me on how to set up a ski erg and use it to accumulate meters, to accumulate calories. He's gonna teach us everything that I need to and you need to know about the ski erg. So, if you stick around to the end of this video, I have a place where you can get a lot more free training from myself and maybe some other guest coaches like Eric. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll tell you exactly where you can get that. So let's dig into it. It's time for the ultimate guide to ski erg. Eric, take it away. Show me what we got here. It looks very similar to a row machine, but it's upside down. I'm confused. <laughs> so this machine is incredible for building anaerobic capacity. I like using any of these machines, rower, the bike, the ski erg, as something to do short intervals on, low impact to really boost your lactic threshold and to boost your anaerobic capacity. So most of the time I'm doing shorter segments on this, you know, anywhere from 15 second to 90 second intervals. I'm not on this for long, long periods of time. Again, it's generally to build build anaerobic capacity and to boost your lactate threshold on some of these machines. So yeah, very similar to the rower as far as the, the, the components of it, um, the flywheel. So this is where you would change the resistance. So the rule of thumb on this, just like a rower, is the higher you go, the harder it's going to be to pull. So if you're a heavier athlete, a more powerful athlete, you can turn it up. If you're a lighter athlete and less powerful and want to use more of your engine on these machines, turn it down. So for me, I like going around like a six to six and a half where I'm using a little bit more power than engine, but still using a lot of engine. I'm typically going to be going at a higher cadence on these machines, having the endurance background and not so much the strength background. Right. Whereas someone with a strength background, you know, they're going to turn it all the way up and they're really going to use their power on it. Mm -hmm. And if it's anything like the row machine, uh, and I, it's very similar um, on the row machine. If you've actually watched our other video on the ultimate guide to rowing, we talk about how to set your drag factor. And there's actually like a setting inside the unit here where you can test based on the air density around you, which here in Colorado, it's a lot lighter. So we actually tend to, to bump our resistance up a little bit higher. There's actually a suggested uh, drag factor that the manufacturer will recommend to stimulate the best, I guess, workout or the best accumulation of meters and calories. That's cool. So that know. might be something to look into. I've never been a member of a gym that has a ski erg ever. Mm -hmm. I've never owned one myself. And also none of the competitions I've ever competed in, except for the Wadapalooza gauntlet. That was the first time I'd ever used a ski erg. Mm. And I'm going to give you a little sneak preview of what it looked like. Here's what it, here's, here's how it looked like. I grabbed this sucker and I just kind of was like this. All arms, I, no core. It was basically yeah. like, I was trying not to vomit. It was basically like a really nice tricep. Yeah, your triceps pump. are going to fatigue pretty okay. quickly doing it like that. My calories per hour is probably, yeah, hovering around the 300 mark. <laughs> so, um, Eric, talk to me. Can you show me and yeah. then I'll try to uh, imitate you. So you like to have your damper setting at six. Yep. Talk to me a little bit about the actual form. How are we making this go? Yeah, so, you know, kind of like the rower where it's legs, core, arms, you want to use bigger muscle groups to power it. Yep. So I do see a lot of people that, you know, are using very little core on this and just using all arms. Your triceps are going to fatigue so quick doing it that yep. way. So you I really, mean, even though his triceps are big, right? His core still fatigue more. is my, stronger. My core's stronger. <laughs> it's a much, much bigger muscle group. So okay. on this, I'm thinking about really throwing my weight into it and like having my core do the work. My abs are what get sore on this much quicker than my triceps get sore because okay. I'm throwing my body weight into it. So I'm thinking about just, again, my body weight is going down. I'm hinging a lot and the pull is kind of at the bottom. Okay. So you don't want to do this. Yeah. That's where you're really going to fatigue a lot. You want to really throw the core in and hinge quite a bit. All right. Can you freeze at the bottom there really quick? Like go yeah. all the way down. One thing I'm noticing is like his his body is fully hinged prior to him doing that arm extension, right? There, yeah. And actually uh, stand all the way up for me and do like a slow motion one. So it yeah. looks like it's kind of like hinge arms. 
hinge arm, kind of like with the rower, it's like we do legs, hips, arms, yep. and then arms, hips, legs. Yep. It's pretty similar here. Yeah, yeah. So again, just really throwing your weight into it first, really using your core strength, and then finishing with your arms and your triceps. Okay, cool. Well, let me hop on and try it, and you can give me some pointers. Is there, I've seen some people do some jumping and stuff. Is there any benefit to that? Like, where should I stand on the platform? Yeah. Because um, I'm pretty sure when I tried it, I, I was about, about right here. I stand about right here. Okay, so. Yeah, and the jumping movement is just putting more of your body weight into it. I mean, if you're really going hard in a short interval, you can definitely do that. But, you know, you're going to fatigue pretty quick. So it's almost like I'm kind of keeping my arms straight. Yep. Yep. Using my abs, and yep. then once I get down to that hinge position, That's I That's when you pull with the triceps. And yep. it's interesting, like, my triceps are pretty sore right now, and I'm actually, I don't feel it in my triceps. But when I first started, when I was doing like this, yep. just kind of like triceps and the hinging, uh, wow, I could feel it. So Yeah, your triceps burn out so quick. So yeah, it's thinking about just really hinging again and using your abs and throwing your body weight into the movement. Yep. Looking good. You might be a professional skier right now. I'm a snowboarder. Sign him up for a competition. I'm a snowboarder, Eric. <laughs> okay. All right. So in terms of your pacing yeah. when it comes to the ski erg, how does it compare with the row? Yeah. So for this, let's call it for like high rocks, which is a competition I have coming up where I'm going to have to do a thousand meters after running a thousand meters. I'll hold about a 148 pace on this. Mm -hmm. Whereas on the row, I'm probably going to hold closer to a 145 pace. Okay. And then if I'm doing max effort intervals on this, um, so max effort, like 10 to 15 kale, I can hold about the same as the rower. Right. So around that, you know, 2000 to 2200 mark for, you know, short, short pulls. We're talking 30 seconds, mm -hmm. but I'm going to fatigue way quicker on this than I do on the, on the rower. Because again, the rower is like legs, big muscle group, core, big muscle group, then pulling with your arms right. where this, you know, small, little smaller muscle group than your legs and lower back strength. And then you're finishing with your triceps. So mm -hmm. you're going to burn out quicker on this. So I guess my advice for people would be to go at a slower pace than what you would do on a rower, okay. especially if you're doing any kind of duration on it, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, you're really going to want to back off on that pace because you're going to fatigue quicker than you typically would on a rower. All right, Eric, we've talked a little bit about the setup. We talked about how it's, you know, a, a lot more hinge than it is triceps. We talked about pacing and how it compares to the rower for you specifically. And I think I found uh, basically the same results. It's a little bit slower for me than it is on the row machine. Now let's talk a little bit more about the nitty gritty of like, where do you set up your feet? Mm -hmm. How do you grip the handles? How are you recovering to the top? Because mm -hmm. I know there's a lot of people that do things differently, but you being the expert that I know you are, I just want to see how you do it. So first you've told us that you set it to about a mid six yep. in terms of the damper setting. Now let's talk about your foot placement. How wide are your feet and where are they in relation to this uh, platform? Yeah, so I'm back a bit. My feet are about shoulder, maybe a little closer than shoulder widths apart. Okay, so it's almost like your deadlift stance. Yeah, okay. yeah, deadlift stance, so a little narrower than shoulder width. Uh, back a bit, I mean, a common mistake I see are people lining up too close, and then, again, you can't hinge. You're gonna hit your head on the machine. So you wanna be back far enough that you can hinge a lot without hitting your head on the screen mm. or the machine. So I think those are two of the most important parts about placement, far enough back, and then a little bit narrower than your shoulders. Okay. Okay, cool. Can you actually go back on and let's do, let's have you just, I just want you to get it up to speed. Like, let's say I was yep. telling you to do 15 cows for time. Yep. Show us what you got. Do you see he kind of rises up on his toes a little bit that, you know, maybe helps with the drop. He's letting gravity pull himself down. And it looks a lot like a deadlift, right? He's hinging a lot at let the, like a deadlift. Awesome. Cool. And he got up to 1700 calories per hour. I think maybe even higher in the middle there. Um, so one thing I'm noticing is, you know, you come up, you get nice full extension because mm -hmm. my, my guess is just like with the rower, it's like uh, if I can get full extension, if I can get the handles high, that means I have a nice long pull. Yeah. Um, I've, I definitely have seen people at the CrossFit Games like do really quick shorter ones, just like we see on the rower. Some people don't do that catch all the way back down. So I guess it's yeah. probably personal preference. You're getting up, you're getting full extension. I noticed you had a little bit of an arm bend. You bent your hips. And then to finish, you got full extension, the full tricep extension, yep. the full tricep pump. Okay, awesome. Love it. Now, in terms of the recovery with your arms, mm -hmm. um, it seemed like you were kind of going straight back up. Have you tried any of the, the butterflying, like mm -hmm. where you go wide and up? Yeah, I mean, I think if... 
if we're doing this for a long period of time, then maybe you want to start switching it a bit, just mm -hmm. so you're not overly fatiguing one muscle group. So I typically don't do the up and around, but I guess if, you know, my triceps were starting to get fatigued, if they were starting to cramp, I'm 30 minutes into it, then I might start doing some of the, that butterfly technique. Um, also, if your shoulders are burning, you know, doing that might flush them out, just like doing wall balls yep. when you're able yep. to flush it out a little bit. So again, I'm not doing it typically in any of the workouts that I would be doing. They're generally shorter intervals, okay. but longer interval, sure. You might want to switch it up a little bit just so you don't over fatigue one muscle group. Sweet. So to wrap things up, uh, we've talked, hopefully you've learned a lot. Uh, my favorite part though is talking about the faults. Let's talk about the stupid things that people do when it comes to ski ergs. And I know the first one that I'm gonna mention, then Eric can come up with a couple more. Uh, we've already kind of talked about it in this video, but it's the, the pure tricep extension. When I, when I first stepped up to this machine, having never used it before, I just, I got really close. I grabbed the handles and I basically just stayed right here. I leaned forward a little bit and I, <laughs> I basically was doing this. Where I wasn't hinging hardly at all, I would just kind of lean forward and it was literally like bend, tricep extension. Bend, tricep extension. And I can tell you right now, I was very, very slow and it was very inefficient. So I'd say the, the first fault you need to be aware of is your triceps shouldn't be screaming necessarily, Correct. right? If your triceps are screaming when you're using the ski erg, that means you're relying on the triceps probably way, way too much. And you should be using that, that hinge and gravity to let it pull that handle down and actually get that full extension. And you'll notice like when Eric was doing it, right? He was back here and when he got that extension, his, his hands were behind his body. He wasn't keeping his hands way out front. Because my guess is that the difference between here and here is quite a bit of distance or, or quite a bit of calories um, in terms of efficiency. So he's not finishing here, he's finishing all the way behind and then coming straight back up. So number one, make sure you aren't smoking your triceps. Number two, we talked about this a little bit. Is yeah. it maybe I, standing too close? Standing too close and the flywheel, I think, are two other ones. Okay. So, yeah, when you line up for it, don't be super close to it because <laughs> then you're not going to be able to throw your weight into it. You're going to hit your head on right. the skier bars. Right, seems dangerous. And I saw when you were doing it, was like the balls of your feet were almost like where these yep. anchor points are. Okay. Yep. And then, again, adjusting the flywheel to compensate for what your strengths and weaknesses may be. So, again, if you're a more powerful athlete and don't have as much of an engine, then maybe you want this damper setting higher, closer to seven, eight, nine. If you're a lighter athlete and have more of an engine, which would be me, you know, I'm going to set it towards the mid range cool. and use more of my engine and a higher cadence because I know that my triceps and my core will fatigue quicker than my aerobic engine. So I want to do that high cadence and really use my engine for it instead yeah, of power. His aerobic engine actually does not fatigue because it's Made by robots. Um, all right, so uh, three main things to watch out for. Make sure you're not too tricep dominant. Don't stand too close to the machine because you're gonna hit your head or you'll be doing it wrong, either one. Uh, and then make sure that you get your damper setting right. It's probably worth playing around with it, but my guess is that for a large majority of people watching, we're gonna be somewhere in that probably four to eight range uh, for almost everyone. I'm sure there are some exceptions. It'll be interesting to check out on the Concept2 website if they recommend having the same drag factor setting. If you wanna learn more about drag factor, you can check out the ultimate guide to rowing that uh, Dr. CJ and I made. Uh, and with that, I really appreciate you watching. Eric, thank you for Cheers. giving me some tips. I still think I need a lot of practice on this thing, uh, but I'm gonna try. And hopefully if he invites me back, Maybe I'll get to do some ski erg workouts with you. What's your favorite ski erg workout? You've been telling me about a complex you've been doing. Yeah, so I like doing longer EMOMs, 32 minute, 40 minute EMOMs. And one of the ones I've been doing a lot lately, and this is like really fatiguing on the core, is gonna be, so for call it 40 minutes, minute one, I'm doing 15 calories on the ski erg. Minute two, I'm doing six to eight bar muscle ups. Minute three, I'm doing 15 GHD sit ups. And minute four, I'm doing eight to 10 burpee box jump over. It's a lot of hinging. That's a lot of core activation, but you're going to build this super solid core by doing stuff like that. Love start it. at 20 minutes, 24 minutes, 28 minutes, right. and build volume. Yeah, either, either start maybe with a, a smaller EMOM time duration if yeah. you want to keep those reps, or even for, for me like and my fitness level right now, I definitely would shave a few reps off of that and probably do it for 20 minutes, and it would absolutely kick my butt. Um, so just make sure you can you can scale it down to your fitness level, and obviously you can't do bar muscle ups, 
One, you should watch more of my videos, and two, you could exchange for something like toes to bar or something yeah. like pull-ups. Pull-ups, like burpee pull-ups. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Love it. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a big thumbs up if you think Eric's house and his ski erg equipment and his muscles are awesome. Give him a big thumbs up. Thumbs down um, if you think I'm ugly. And smash that subscribe button uh, so you don't miss any more videos. I'm going to be making more content with amazing people like Eric. All right, quick question of the day. Eric and everyone watching, if you had $1,000 to spend on a piece of cardio equipment. Pay me. Uh, I'll, I'll hit you up later. Uh, if you have $1,000 to spend on a piece of cardio equipment, what would it be? Would it be this? Would it be the ski erg? So for me, it would probably be the assault bike. Okay. I think the assault bike is one of the most effective ways to build anaerobic capacity. Mm. Um, for me, having you know an, an engine from Ironman Triathlon, it's difficult oftentimes to get my heart rate super high. The assault bike, it's such a full body movement that my heart is what fatigues first on the assault bike. So okay. I love that for anaerobic conditioning, for short sprints. That's what I would spend the thousand bucks on. All right, I wanna know you, what would you spend a thousand dollars on? Would you buy a ski erg or would you get a rower or would you get a bike for me it's probably going to be a rower because i feel like it pops up in more crossfit style workouts so it might be more useful um and i do a lot of biking anyway with mountain biking trying to keep up with this guy so that's probably what i do but hey you know what with my next thousand dollars i might go out and buy one of these so that i don't look so stupid in the next video oh and wait i did promise you some free content go to wadprep.com on the main page, I actually have a page dedicated to giving away tons and tons and tons of free content. Whether you want to learn about how to do pull-ups or how to do muscle-ups or handstand walks or handstand push-ups or lifting a barbell, it's all there and it's all free. All you have to do is enter your name and email and you can get all the free stuff you want. I will see you in next week's video. Peace. Real men row at a 10. That's all you need to know. Real men and women row at a 10. Anything else is for is for wussies, this is PG, gotta keep it PG around here. So if you don't row at a 10, if you don't get the biggest pump possible when you're rowing, 